In order to live an extraordinary and abundant life, you must focus on your internal battle and win within. My name is Randy Wilson, and welcome to the Rich Mind Podcast. All right, everyone, welcome back to the Rich Mind Podcast. And today, bring it back a special guest. I have my beautiful wife, Stacy Wilson, here again with us today. And today we're going to talk uh, a little bit about some of the things that we would like to share with our children. If you don't know much about us, uh, Stacy and I, we've been married and been together actually for almost 30 years. We've been married coming up on 28 and we have three children. We have a son that is 26. We have a daughter that is 24 and we have another daughter that's 22. One of the big passions I have is giving back to that younger generations, things that, that they may not know that we've discovered or that I've discovered really through trial and error in my own life. Uh, Stacy and I have discussions about that a lot all the time. And we thought that maybe we'd just jump on here. We know that they don't listen to the podcast. They don't listen to me. So, <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, I just thought it might be a little bit of value, right? If you are in that 20 ish age frame up until the, I can even just say even to your younger thirties and you're just struggling out there trying to figure out, what's going on, why it's happening. Uh, you know, I've been through many market cycles. Uh, I've obviously been married now for going on three decades. Uh, you know, obviously raised three kids that are out there kicking butt out there in society. You know, I've, I've had some success, but I've had some failures too. I'm actually a grandpa too. I didn't, I didn't even bring that up. We're grand, we're grandparents of a baby boy named Rowan that actually turns six months tomorrow. So maybe we can share a little bit what we'd like to share with him as well. But anyways, I'll, enough of my babbling. Let's bring Stacy on the show here and let's uh, let's have a fun conversation. Hello, everybody. Glad to be back. Let's you need see to get where this takes us. Yeah, you let's, need to get let's better. Let's see where this it's just takes practice, us. Right? Yeah, exactly. So what is that? What does that mean? Where do you think it might take us? Um, gosh, there's always so much stuff you want them to know or see them doing or know that what we did. It's like, oh. How far back do you take it? How many changes do you try to make? It's a lot. It can be fun. It can so, be fun. It can, it can be also fun. not be so much fun. Exactly. Yep, that too. <laughs> so what What are the things that come to your mind? Some of the things that you wish, uh, I know, like I said, we have conversations with our kids. Um, I know you do almost daily. I yeah. talk to them multiple times per week. So this, some of this information might not be uh, brand new to them, but then maybe if they can hear it just maybe in a different format, they might take it on a different way. But is there anything that uh, comes to mind. You, you, so here's the thought is that we could probably take them on collectively, like as a group. But then if you mm -hmm. have any, any words of wisdom to share with each one individually, I thought that might be valuable as well. Gotcha. Yeah. Um, one thing I seem to find that I'm telling them a lot of times is to slow down. They think, you know, if something's going on, they tend to get way out over their skis and get super anxious about something that, they may or may not play out the way that they've got it going for themselves. So a lot of times it's slowing them down, talking them through everything that has happened, what is happening and what's real coming up in the next few weeks. And I think everybody kind of does that, right? Everybody's always worried. And I try to tell them to calm down. Don't worry. Um, things are going to be okay. Just slow down and handle the current moment. And then as it proceeds, you can, shift and do some different things. So when you say slow down, what are some of the things mm -hmm. that they seem to be too quick at? Um, gosh, they get quick. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. <laughs> they, they get quick to think that things are just terrible and it's going to stay that way. That's probably one of the biggest things. Um, everybody has money worries or, you know, wants to do more. And how do I get to do that? I feel like I'm never going to get to do that. And it's like, okay, just slow down, plan a little bit, think ahead and you'll get where you want to go. And they always end up getting to do what they wanted plus some usually. So it's just reminding them that in the, that moment, that five, 10 minutes of pure stress that they're feeling is five or 10 minutes, not 10 months, not 10 years, not whatever, that it's temporary. It's in their head. They're ramped up just to stop and slow down. Breathe. I always tell them breathe. Yes. I tell you breathe. I've heard you say that. <laughs> Me? 
I don't need yeah, to breathe. Yeah. I need Never. to. I need to get ramped up. <laughs> I need to move faster. Uh -huh. So, can you think back to a time when we were similar to that? I mean, we've been together, married since we were twenty-two. You were twenty-one, I believe. I was twenty-two. Yep. Started having kids relatively right after that, basically, right? So we've mm -hmm. lived that twenty-year-old-ish age frame, which with is where they are now trying to raise a family. Obviously I was grinding, trying to do the, the work and job corporate thing. Um, mm -hmm. Is there, can you think of some examples of some of the things that we've had to even slow down on? For me, I think some of them that stand out is the moving. We did quite a bit of moving early on. And when you start to take on big tasks like that, thinking about, I mean, those are big changes, big life changes, but even switching jobs or deciding to change a job that you think, you know, you get used to that comfort, the security of whatever it's providing. Um, and then they get, they, they get ramped up when they have to think about changing their job sometimes, or they're really quick to make a decision to change a job. And it's like, whoa, 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 whoa. Are, are you sure that's what you need to be doing? So it's a slowdown. It's a, it's a hurry up and slow down at the same time, right? That happens. Most of life is that way. So, still try to work through them with, okay, what's the pros and cons? That's always been our go-to to slow us down. That's how I've always used it to slow us down. And if you slow down long enough to look at that and weigh the situation wholly, not just what's happening in that five minutes in front of you, then you can make the decision to go or to hold. And I try to work with them on that when I can. When they were younger, for sure, getting through high school and stuff, that was kind of important. To get them to, to slow, slow down. down, getting through high school. Yeah, to get important. them slow down, realize, okay, this this or that isn't going to make or break everything in two weeks from now, let alone today. But as we all know, those teenage years and big decisions and stuff just feels like it has to be decided right now, like yesterday. And it's not usually never, usually never that way. So Most what life is, is not dire. Yeah. So what do you think has contributed to that? Because I would almost say that we sometimes fall into that trap as well, thinking that it's mm -hmm. like the best time was yesterday. We don't have enough time coming up. I, I guess I should just put myself, I, I do that, right? I have an mm -hmm. issue with seeing positive things in the future, thinking I don't have enough time. A lot of that stems back to my parents and how they passed early on, which is unfortunate, right. but that's always given me that sense of urgency that I need to move faster, uh, mm -hmm. more diligently, which can be good. I don't, I'm not saying that mm -hmm. it's bad because it does, no. it has made me move more often and I don't mean physically move, but just take action more often. But at the same time, it's definitely a, a negative as well. I was trying to think of the word to use, but you know, I don't know if negatives might be a little bit harsh of a word, but anyway, so it's that ebb and flow of having a decision, having a decisive moment and moving forward, having the courage to move forward. Right. But then realizing that you do have time and it's not the end of the world one, of the, one way or the other. Right. Yeah. Well, and, you know, a lot of times you get your hopes up and then that's when it's like, okay, wait a minute, you guys slow down because if this works out, fantastic. But if it doesn't, it doesn't mean everything needs to be thrown away. That's, that's where for me the slow down has to come in and just keep looking forward, keep taking action, but be prepared for there to be bumps in the road everything's not roses just because that's how you've planned it. And sometimes they have to re be reminded of that also, that it's not always going to go how you planned it because you don't know all the answers <laughs> till you get there. But that, okay. So that stems into the next part of the question I'd like to dive into then is, is taking action and not being mm -hmm. afraid to take action. One thing that mm -hmm. we, you and I have done is that we're not afraid to try. We've, Right. I, I kind of always put it in. We've, you know, we might not be moving as fast as some, but we're definitely moving faster than most meaning. Mm -hmm. And when I mean faster, I just mean we're, we're willing to take action, unscripted action, unknowing action of the outcome faster than most. Can you speak that with how you would encourage them? Let's just say that they were, they were listening to us. Imagine if they were actually listening to us <laughs> and they're like, huh, I wonder what mom and dad would say about that. Can you speak to that ability to have the courage to step into the unknown, not having an idea of what the outcome potentially could be. Yeah, I think we've encouraged a couple of them at least to do something like that in the past. Um, 
we try, at least I try, you try too. We try to help them think through the scenarios, good, better, best, bad, if there's a bad. And so that they kind of can see a bigger picture than the tunnel vision that most of us get. So I, you know, we try to tell them that, you know, it's probably going to turn out the way you're seeing it, or it's probably going to come out close to it. So go for it. And if not, what's the worst that's going to happen? You're going to lose X, Y, Z dollars, or you're going to lose some time, or you might not be that person's friend, stuff like that. And is, and if that's, if the worst case scenario is still okay, then yeah, you got to go try some stuff and go see where it takes you. And I try to encourage them that way. So if there are individuals out there taking out our kids and they're thinking, but how do you, how do you do that? How do you take that first step? What are some of the things you say to our kids to try to encourage them to be willing to step out on a limb, right? To make a move, Mm -hmm. to change positions. We've had uh, our son, our oldest, he's just as recently switched jobs. He was in a, what you would consider a quote unquote secure position at a a large corporation and within less than a month from having the idea that he wanted to try something new to starting to go out and actually physically going to locations and, and shaking hands with the people that made those decisions. I mean, within a month, they were like, yes, we want you and we need you to start yesterday. So it was, so it was with his courage and his willingness Mm -hmm. to put himself out there. Uh, That's something that I think that we've instilled in them. But if Mm -hmm. folks are listening that are not necessarily in that place, can you think of a, something, a word of encouragement that you could help them with to think through that kind of type of a process? Um, there again, it's a good, better, best thing or a pros and cons thing. If the pros, I mean, if there's only one or two cons to something and the cons are, well, I might have to see, keep doing what I'm doing or I'll have to go back to what I'm doing. Is that a worst case scenario? You're already doing it and it's providing your life. So if you have an opportunity or you think you can get a chance to move yourself up, everybody's always moving ahead and moving up, then at least put your name in the hat. If you don't try, you'll never know. And if they shut you down and they're, no, you're not, you're not ready for this or no, you're not the right thing. Okay. You're still already have your security that you already had. Same thing when they have decided to change apartments. That's probably one of the bigger ones that they debated on, you know, do they, spend a little more a month to get into a bigger place or a better place, even though the place they're in, they've been in two, three years. Um, is it a better thing? And it's like, okay, well, you got to weigh your pros and cons. What are you going to gain from it? What's your cost that's going to be involved to get out of what you're doing and make a decision? Is it really, you know, and see yourself in that space, the new space or the new job. And does that make you have that? I always say that Ugh, in your stomach, Does it give you that little adrenaline rush? And if it gives you the adrenaline rush more than just in that first five minutes, if you come back to it six hours from now and you still get that adrenaline rush and you come back to it 24 hours now and you still get the adrenaline rush, then yeah, that's a, that to me is a stake in the ground that, okay, at least try to go see if you can make it happen for sure. Because that adrenaline rush is your subconscious telling you, okay, yes, jump, jump, try to jump, go see what happens, jump and you have to follow that gut instinct sometimes just to, I mean, if all else fails, you aren't going to lose what you already have unless you burn a bridge that you shouldn't do. You know I mean? You can't quit a job before you get the job or even know if you're going to be qualified for the job and you can't turn in your notice to leave an apartment until you have somewhere new that you're going to go. Same thing with selling a house. I don't, it's always baffled me. We've known people that sell their house and don't know where they're going. Um, but we fell into that like two years ago. We knew where we wanted, we knew what we wanted to do. <laughs> but we, but I will say in, in defense of us, we, the process, we were going from owning to renting, which is the process right. is like nothing in comparison. If we were going to go buy again, we didn't have to go get a loan. We didn't have to go through the banks. Right. We didn't have all of that stuff that a normal. Yeah. Normal from house to house. A house to house is the one that gets me is people are selling a house and sell it and want to move to a new house, but either they don't have the house or they don't know what they're qualified for. So it's those things. It's like you, that's where you got to slow down for a minute, really think through the situation that you're about to put yourself in. And once you have all your boxes checked, then yeah, move forward. If that's what you've decided to do, then yeah, it's time to move forward and just go for it and see what happens. So that ability to make that decision, Mm -hmm. you work with young people 
all the time and we're not going to name names or, I mean, cause this isn't specifically towards anybody, but one right. observation that we've made and we've made it even with our own children. So it's, it's almost like it's in house as well is that ability to make decisions at this point mm -hmm. in their life and not being afraid of an outcome. I think that one of my big things that it just, it just irks me is just how the system just gets people to believe that everything is either right or it's wrong. It's like you can't afford to make a mistake because it's wrong or you're shamed for being wrong or whatever. I mean, on a stupid test or a stupid whatever grade, it's the dumbest thing I've ever seen in my entire life. And I'm not saying that being intelligent is unimportant, but at the end of the day, when it keeps a young person from being willing to step out into an un unknown situation because they think or, or they can't get beyond the idea that it's wrong or that they might make a wrong decision that they don't make any decisions at all. And they just get, yeah. stay stuck. Speak to that a little bit. Cause I know, like I said, I, you, you work hand in hand with some younger individuals that mm -hmm. I know you've seen that a little bit firsthand, but then we see that in our own kids as well. And how, uh, just how impactful that is not being able to step into that decision. Yeah. I think everybody kind of has that fear of doing the wrong thing. Right. And then, somebody not appreciating you or whatever. And that's the biggest thing that's hard to get past is that not everybody's going to like you. That's just a fact of life. Not everybody's going to support your choice or everybody's going to support what it is you're doing. But if it's who you are and what you want to be doing, then you have to be willing to go for it and try it and know that you probably still have a safety net somewhere. There's still somebody that's going to tell you, Hey, it's okay try this or do that instead. You can always find somebody that's willing to encourage you even when you're being discouraged. Um, for me personally, I'm starting to realize and be around, like you're saying, this new generation, they're kind of fun. They're timid about making decisions, but they're not afraid to change. It's inter It's like a double standard thing. They're interesting because they are ones that I'm learning that, you know, two, three years, that's the job. Okay. Moving on to what's next. What else can I do? What else is new? What else can I try? There are what can I try group. Now, it might take them a while to make that decision or they're, you know, they, it's hard. Yeah, it's hard to put into words, but I see it in some of them. I'm, yeah, like you're saying, I work with college students right now that are, you know, trying to figure out where they're headed and what they're doing. And you can see the the roles, you know, their their mind is ticking and they also realize that there's so many options. And I think that's where it slows them down sometimes is there's so many options. That's where they get crippled in making the decision because then they're worried about which option is the right option. It's not that there aren't options available. It's just which one is the best one. And there's not necessarily a best one in every scenario. We've learned that along the way. This house versus that house. Well, it has this and that one doesn't. That one has this though and that one doesn't. So you just have to make a decision at some point. Because at some point you start to compare apples to apples. Do you want a red one or a green one? Just pick. Do you want black cherries or strawberries? Pick. It, I mean, it's just becomes, you got to start making the decisions even though there's multiple options. And that's sometimes where one of our children likes to look at all the options and then just pass on everything. Like, what are you doing? <laughs> what, are, what are you doing? Um, because of overwhelm, I think. And eventually a decision gets made and changes happen. But in that moment, they just shut down everything. and just like, ah, I'll be, I'm fine doing what I'm doing. I'm good where I'm at. I'm, I'm this, I'm that. And I see a lot of people that do that. So. So now is a moment. What would you do yeah. to encourage that person? Uh, you mentioned it was a child of ours. We won't name names, Yeah. keep everybody anonymous, but assuming that if they are listening to us, that they would probably pick up on that, on what you just said, but what mm -hmm. are some of the things that you try to encourage them to believe or to think, uh, through that process? I, um, take them backwards. Usually. Do you remember when you debated on doing X, Y, Z, and now look what happened? Do you remember when else you decided on this or that? And look how that turned out. And I try to, and you know me, I only focus on usually the positives. Negatives don't register in my brain after they've happened. They just kind of disappear. So it's usually the positive. You know, remember when you were debating on this and this happened and now look at, you know, that turned out so great. Um, you know, you debated on keeping this friend in your life and look how much better it was when you decided to move on. 
because you knew it probably wasn't a good thing, but yet it's hard to let something go that you've had security in. So it's reminding them that, you know, decisions you've made have gotten you to where you are now at 22 or 24 or 26, and that you got to keep making the decisions to keep moving forward. Because each time they do move, each time they, I mean, just like us or just like most people, each time you make a decision, you usually move forward. And if you move backward, it's not for very long because you're going to figure out how to make it move forward is what I try to remind them. That's one thing you and I have so. that discussion all the time is that mm-hmm. like, I think sometimes we get stuck in the decision phase because we're not sure the outcome yeah. when the outcome will present itself once you make the decision and begin to move forward. Mm-hmm. That's been yeah. a big epiphany for me as I've done my study as far as personal development and working on myself. But I think I did that more out of a- accident, I guess, more or less when we were in that 20, 30s yeah. age, we were just, we were just moving and grooving and making things happen as much as we possibly could right, wrong. I wouldn't even put any label on it at all. They were just decisions and we just kept moving forward that, yeah, I don't think I realized how much we, I were stepping into things uh, without knowing what the outcome was to the point where I became comfortable being able to do that. So can Mm -hmm. you think of, uh, you know, how important that would be to have an idea and then just step into it, make a decision to step into it and then get going and how important that is to get used to doing that. Yeah, it's huge. It's, it's a huge thing because every time you can learn to do that a little bit more and a little bit more, your choices are going to get bolder and bigger instead of just, you know, you can decide if you're eating pancakes or eggs today. Well, that's great, (laughs) but you have to be able to decide the bigger stuff and the bigger decisions you make and the quicker not quicker necessarily, but the more educated you are at making that decision and just saying, okay, I'm going to go for it. Um, makes a huge difference. I'm not saying just leap off the end of a bridge because you can, that's not what I'm saying, but yeah, you've got to be willing to make, make moves. If you think that move is what's meant for you, then you've got to try it. You've got to go for it. And yeah, it, it may not always work out. You may not always get that thing that you were wanting, but most of the time you come up pretty darn close. And yeah, I used to have a, you know, a a leader of mine a long time ago that said, if, you know, if you shoot for the moon and you land in the stars, which everybody's heard that, is that so bad? No, because you've gone somewhere from where you were to where you wanted to be. You're closer to where you wanted to be. So yeah. Love it. So the thought in my mind is it's chess, not checkers, meaning it's, yeah, it's strategic moves that require you to move. You can't just stay stagnant. You can't just Mm -hmm. sit still on the, on the game board. You have to still have to move, but it's, it's a strategy. I, I have become pretty good because of my practice of, of predicting what outcomes potentially could be. Like I can have an idea or a plan and I can think through scenarios out into the future of what I think within relative certainty, never a hundred percent certainty, but within relative certainty, what the outcome potentially could be. But I was able to, I've been able to do that because I've practiced taking right. steps without mm-hmm. the uncertainty, understanding right. what my capabilities are, understanding who I'm working with, those kinds of things. And if you're not willing to do that, it's going to be difficult to start from square one, playing that game of chess and not necessarily know which move to make first, um, without, you know, it's just going to be a little bit messy at first, but it's okay. It's okay. Make that mess, those messy decisions and move forward. Yeah. Well, and I always try to tell the kids to never stop dreaming. Cause if you stop dreaming or stop planning further out, then you do put yourself in a box and you do stay where you are, but you've got to be willing to keep, keep dreaming, keep, what else can I do? What else do I want? Where else do I want to go? What else do I want to see? in order to keep moving forward and be able to see and do and be more. I mean, gosh, we've done that more in the last 10 years, probably than the whole 30. And we have seen and done some things that you wouldn't have told me 10 years ago, we were going to see or do. Um, But wow, because we were like, okay, well, what else, what else is there? What have we not done that we want to try? That's probably a bigger thing that we are doing now. I think more and more, we still limit a little bit, but we've got a lot, you know, everybody's got a lot going on behind the scenes. Right. And, but to know that we want to do more to say, okay, this is kind of a goal for the year. Now, if you get there, great. If you don't, it's still on your list. It's still a dream thing, 
So keep going, keep reinventing yourself. I guess that's part of where I'm at now too, is you just keep reinventing yourself. You're never done. It's never finished. You're never, the boxes never all get checked. It's you, as soon as you start checking them, then there's new ones on the list. And you're like, dang, that list won't stop growing. <laughs> um, you know, I mean, we, we both have been through, um, Jim Rohn classes even where, you know, write down your hundred things you want to do and then categorize them by A, B, C, and D and then category. Well, heck a hundred things sounds overwhelming, but when you don't have to do it all at once, you come up with 200 things without even trying. If you really just set yourself dream and think and wish and hope and guess what? Those dreams and wishes and hopes start to become real things. If they're really deep inside of you is something that's there that you don't pay attention to. So I love that. I love that with my kids because they're not afraid to dream and hope and make something happen. They'll come to me with some of the most off the wall things. And you're like, really? We're going to do what? Okay. Let's see how that goes. And some of that's been the trips with the girls the last couple of years. You know, they just throw it out there and smack it on the wall. And next thing I know, we're jet setting to places I hadn't planned on going yet. <laughs> um, <laughs> or, you know, or returning to, you know, they just, they put it out there and they decide that, Hey, this is, this is kind of what I want to do. Like, okay, well, let's figure out how we do that. So it's fun. It's fun to have all the kids do that. Right. Riley is an adventurer. Gosh, at heart for sure. The girls are a little more strategic. Riley is just the, he is just the, let's go. I can do that. Let's, uh, oh, that's neat over there. He's like the, he's the, he's a built in squirrel in the family. Oh, that's cool. Oh, that's cool. Okay. That's cool. Let, you know what I mean? True. He's just always willing to jump in and try something new at any given moment. And I love that about his personality. I try as the opposite of that. Cause I would say that I'm not, I try not <laughs> to discourage that out of him and it's mm -hmm. tough. I'm not going to say it's easy. It's tough yeah. to let him have those ideas, have those. He's the one that had the job change within the last 30 days that just happened. And it's an opportunity that's twice, if not three times better than what he had before. Right. That he just is willing just to, like you said, he's, I like how you said, he's just like a little squirrel. He's just, he's all over his, all over the place with his ideas. He I'm is. working with him on controlling his emotions because he'll get really high yeah. and he'll get really low. Meaning he mm -hmm. has a huge variance between when he's really super excited and when he's down on himself. So I'm trying to get him to kind of play in the middle as much as I possibly can. And, uh, but at the same time, try not to take away that excitement for life yeah. that he has. Uh, yeah. it's, it's as his dad, I wish I had it. I'm envious of him having it and I don't want it. I don't want to take it away from him. Um, mm -hmm. so I try and you help me definitely keep control of, of what I need to say or what I want to say uh, a lot more than I would ever have done definitely on my own. So, but yeah, yeah, it's super cool to, to watch him do that. Yeah. Yeah. He's not afraid to just do something, a drop of a hat. I mean, he could call in the next hour and be like, Hey, we're going to do this tonight. You're like, Oh, okay. We are, here we go. <laughs> you know, you just never know with him what the new idea is going to be. And it's like, now he's always the idea set in and it happens within days, usually weeks at the most weeks are really long term for him. Um, he is a, do it now, definitely a do it now kind of person. And, uh, it's fun. And he usually is doing fun stuff. That's the thing too. It's not that he's out there just willy nilly. He's doing fun stuff that just, you know, Hey, he got a whim. He's going to go do it. And away he goes. And you're like, cool. <laughs> so I and love away that. He goes. Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah. So let's pivot a little bit and okay. maybe start bringing this one in for a landing. Let's change yeah. then to, to little Rowan our grandchild yeah. as far as, yeah. So if he's listening to this in the future, <laughs> Rowan, we, we love you very much. Think of, can you think of, you know, just a handful of things that you would want to share with him as he's growing up? Obviously I just mentioned or a little bit ago, he is, you know, just becoming six months old. He's almost walking. I mean, he's almost standing yeah. on his own. He's definitely sitting up on his own. He's changing almost daily to the point daily. where it, at the time is really flying by. It's hard to believe it's yeah. only, only been six months, but it feels like he's been here forever. Any words of wisdom you'd want to share with uh, little Rowan? At this point, I'm not sure it's with Rowan, but with us, the adults in his life, his aunts, his mm -hmm. dad, us is to track the things that he's saying or wants to be doing while he's little. 
Because so many of us are told when we're bigger that, well, what did you dream about when you were a kid? And once you get past a certain age, you don't dream the same way you did when you were a kid. And so I want us to take on the responsibility of getting that down, starting a journal, starting something. When he starts talking and doing stuff, um, the memories of what he loved to do most, what it like Riley. Riley was a train kid. You could get him away from trains when he was a kid. Um, things like that, you, you know, the things that you won't necessarily remember because it was when you were three and four, but that we can remind him when he's older and then be able to inflect in him. Okay. These are things that you loved. Keep figuring out how to be something similar to these things that you loved. That's one thing I would tell him to do is if it's something you love, try not to let go of it. We all get too busy and let go of things that we like to do because should we be doing something we like to do? That's always the back of your mind. You know, do I really have time to just sit down and do something I want to do or what should I be doing? And I want him to remember that he can do anything. He can have fun. He can, yeah, he can dance in the rain. He can do whatever it is he wants to do. If that's what you want to do, then go do it without regard for anything else. As long as it's not going to hurt him or anybody else. That's always our bottom line with all the kids. As long as you're not going to hurt yourself or anybody else, you're good to go. But, (laughs) but go for it. Have fun. Yeah. The the difference is just, you know, you can take risks. You just don't Mm -hmm. want to physically hurt someone or yourself. Right. 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 You you might lose something in the time frame of being a little bit courageous, but at the same time, as long as as you're not physically hurting someone. Yeah. Go for it. I love that. I love how you said that. So yes, just have the courage, step into it. Just know that the world is a big place, a lot of people, a lot of people, a lot of things to do, a lot of things to see. And this little bubble that we are in, right? We all have our own little bubble that we live our life in may not be as accurate as you think it is and having the courage to step into that hundred percent. Yeah. You can definitely be anything you choose to be as long as you're not taking something away or hurting somebody else is I would definitely want to second that for him as well. So this has been a lot of fun. I I had a feeling that we'd be able to jump on and <laughs> just have a conversation about, you know, some of the things that we talk about quite a bit with our children, but then some things maybe that they haven't heard from us in this type of way before. Uh, is there any closing remarks you'd like to share with anybody as we sign off today? No, just all three of them. You each are unique in your own ways, but yet collectively you guys are definitely your own little pack, I guess is the right word. We've always said our own gang, the Wilson gang is the Wilson gang. And, but it takes each of their uniqueness and who they are and how they each keep moving forward. They're both, they're all, they're both, they're all three changing all the time. And I don't want any of them to put themselves in a box or in a corner, just keep being your unique selves and supporting each other. Cause when you guys, when we watch them support each other, it's amazing what any one of them will choose to do. And then when they even decide to do it all together, whatever it is, it's, it's a lot of fun. It's a lot of fun to watch the three of them be the three of them, but also be uniquely themselves. So keep going guys. You're doing fantastic. And we love watching the show. <laughs> we got a front row seat, don't we? <laughs> we sure we do. do. It's the best show we, I've been a part of. It is. And we, do, and we love all of you, each of you individually and collectively, like you said, the, the Wilson five, uh, now with Rowan, the Wilson six, uh, we'll always stick up for each other. That's come something we've always stood by. And yeah, it's fun to watch them rally around each other uh, when the time is needed. And it's, it, they haven't failed to do that yet. And I hope it does. Yeah. And I mean, obviously some cer- cer- certain circumstances might keep them from doing something right away or something like that if it's not majorly important. But at, at any time, if any of them have needed anything, they've always got each other's back. And that's that's a lot of fun. Yeah, your mom and I love you very much. And we are super proud of you. And we hope and can't wait to see how you guys progress into your later 20s, into your 30s, and keep trying to figure out this thing called life, just like your mom and I have been trying to, and we're still trying to as we get older. (laughs) It's definitely an interesting experience. So uh, folks, I hope you found value in this conversation. Like I said, I thought this would be a lot of fun just to kind of jump on here and share some of the ideas, some of the things that we're sharing with our own children. Uh, maybe it resonates with you and maybe uh, some children that you might have in your uh, family, or even if it's just close proximity to you. Uh, share your ideas with us. If you have some things that you thought uh, that takeaways from what we shared, if you have some different ideas, feel free to respond back to us and let us know. We're always trying to improve on our family unit 
and trying to get it as, as close as we possibly can. So go out there, have a fantastic day. And Stacy and I look forward to coming back to you again with another episode very soon. Until then, bye now.